Hello, my name is Anna and I decided to name this channel Craft Me A Card because I love making cards. But every now and then I share things that are not cards, um, but they're still crafty related. And on these days I named the post Wacky Wednesday. In this case, I wanted to come on screen to forewarn you that on this Wacky Wednesday, I might include something that you are going to want to purchase. I have started adding real flowers to my cards. These flowers are dried. There is a way to make these flowers retain their color a little bit more than if you press them in a book. Adding real flowers to whether it be a card, whether it be uh, an art journal, to whatever project you're working on really elevates your project by a gazillion and one. Every card I have given with these flowers has just had a tremendous reaction that is priceless. <laughs> so let me show you how to get started with getting these flowers so you can add to your projects. And just a reminder, if you haven't already done so, I invite you to please subscribe. It really would help me to motivate me to bring you more crafty content. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first I want to talk about the difference between pressing a flower in a book versus pressing it on something that is meant for pressing flowers. And right here you can see the vibrancy. This is... This is dry already, and you can see how vibrant the colors are. The white is not stained or anything. Um, you can see this yellow, like daisy, um, and it's completely dry. It's dry. So there's that one. There are some that do lose their color. This is a beautiful purple all around. It's so beautiful. It's like a lavender. But this one did lose its color. It just retained it in the middle of the flower. And you can see this is completely dry also. And here's a comparison of two flowers. Um, this, this one here, you can see has lost its color. They're the same kind of flowers. Um, this one had more humidity in it and this one didn't. But look how beautiful the colors dried on that one versus one that was in the book. It like the moisture gets to it and doesn't allow it to keep the colors. If that makes any sense. I mean that's the only logical explanation that I could find to it that moisture kind of kills the colors of the flowers when we draw them in a book but when we put them in something that's made for pressing flowers I think that it just sucks the moisture out. There are different ways of drying flowers. You can use a silica gel which is like a bunch of little balls that you put your flowers in. For me that was way too complicated, time consuming and the process was just something that I didn't want to deal with. Um, you can also dehydrate them like in an oven, uh, but that's like an apparatus, so I also didn't want to deal with that. So for me, because I want to use these flowers on my paper projects, having them flattened out was the best way to go. Now before I continue, I want to clarify that I am no way sponsored by any company or any product to advertise this. This was a flower presser that was given to me by my hubby on Easter. And because I'm on a no spend year, um, he went ahead and he got it off of my saved items off of uh, a list that I have on Amazon. Uh, because he saw me, I guess, fidgeting a lot with flowers inside um, our Bible and other thick books that we have in the house. And because I'm not sponsored in any way uh, by any company, I'm not going to give you any links to this presser. You can simply go on Google or Amazon, which is where he got this one, and there just type in flower presser and you will find many different sizes and different brands. Just go with whatever you prefer and uh, they all have the same function. Okay, so here is the presser that my hubby gave me and uh, it comes in this plastic bag. It also comes with four boards. These four boards should be in a sealed plastic and you want to make sure that these are completely dry. They should be hard and they should be sealed, of course. 
also comes with some sponges four of them also and plastic bags and a little instruction manual in the same pouch where the uh, sponges are this is where you're going to find the bags the plastic bags now these plastic bags um, are used for you to put the presser once everything is nice and pressed you put it in this bag to avoid any moisture from seeping into the presser along with these four sponges you're going to find some pieces of like tissue paper and here I'm going to open these platforms they're like pressed paper if you will I'm sure it has some kind of something that helps soak up the moisture I have a friend that received these and they were already humid they already had moisture you do not want that you they need to be hard and then you also get two covers this is where your presser is going to be sandwiched so first what you want to do is take one of the covers put a layer of sponge then grab your flowers and I like to take uh, the stem off just so that I can have the flower completely flat you place your flowers on to the sponge and you want to place them facing the sponge so that the flat part could be in the back of the flower the sponge helps create a little 3d effect and what I also love about this is that you don't have to purchase anything a lot of these are weeds weeds that I have found while I'm walking on the sidewalk weeds that are growing in my backyard some of these flowers well, actually most of these are from my garden some of these I found walking in a park and <laughs> I just grabbed some and I got home and I started pressing them so once you have your flowers all how you would like them to be pressed you go ahead and you grab one of the sheets the uh, tissue paper sheets and then you place it on top and on top of this sheet goes the hard plate I think this is the one that absorbs the moisture and once you feel that this plate is very humid you could go ahead and reuse it you could place it in the microwave oven to dry it out I put two plates and I put two minutes and they dried beautifully ready to be used again okay so this completes a layer and you continue on with the rest sponge flowers tissue paper hard plate and you continue till you do all the layers and take advantage of the seasons these pink ones grow like crazy but it's it's a window I noticed that there were a lot during Easter and now they're all gone and this is a bush that my sister had left and she had very few of these pink ones so I went ahead and I grabbed those so I could press them Mother's Day is coming it's around the corner so why not take some of those flowers that are dying that they give us on Mother's Day and press them and they will last forever I do have to say uh, if you have allergies make sure you're on your medication <laughs> because I have found myself sniffling after working with these flowers also if you don't like bugs uh, sometimes when we get these wild flowers that are out in the open they come with little um, insects little bugs um, not harmful at least not that I know of um, but if you don't want to deal with little bugs you could always purchase flowers from the store and those are always fumigated and clear of little insects they're not bad at all but I know that some people could be um, you know a little afraid of them I know my daughter she's afraid of ants <laughs> she freaks out so yeah just a little disclaimer okay once you have all your layers nicely completed all four layers you're going to place the second cover on top of all this layering that means that your layers are going to be sandwiched in between these two covers the kit also comes with two velcro straps these velcro straps are going to hug all of these layers they're going to help press down on all these layers and keep them pressed you want to make sure that these straps are nice and tight so pull them as far as you can after your layers are nicely secured you're going to place this bundle inside the plastic bag provided and then you're going to press on the seal forget about these flowers for about 24 hours then you could come back and check on them yes 24 hours I know when I press flowers in a book it takes a week a month for everything to be nice and dry this only takes about 24 hours 
Now, if you have a flower that has more layers or that is a little thicker, it can take two to three days. But for the most part, I'm pulling these flowers out of the presser every day. Okay, so the time has come to open these. Fast forward uh, to about, I would say about 30 hours later. It was like a day and some. Time to reveal what is inside. Okay, so you slowly start taking the layers off and peeling off each layer. All these flowers are now completely dry. You can feel it. They don't feel humid anymore. They don't feel sticky. Um, so you can see here that they're completely dry. Well, they actually don't look dry, but they look flat, <laughs> which means they have been pressed. But more than anything, it's how they feel. They don't feel sticky. They don't feel um, humid anymore. Uh, they feel like paper. Some feel like hard cardboard. Um, so it's really quite interesting and it's very exciting when uh, revealing what has been pressed. And don't forget about greenery also. These green leaves have also maintained a beautiful color, which really will come in handy when putting these into projects. And also you can hear when the flower is dry. It sounds like paper. Look at all the beautifulness. I really love how these sunflowers, these leaves just maintain that vibrant yellow. It's just gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful. Um, these changed a little bit in color. They're not as bright as they were when we pressed them, but they're still very pretty. I think I am getting addicted to these flowers. Um, it's just really very um, satisfying when you see them, when you see what they turn out like. And uh, I just really have enjoyed, I've enjoyed working with them a lot. And I mean, flowers can go everywhere. So imagine putting that into your projects, into cards that you give people. Uh, just make them extra special. These petals of this, uh, sunflower they were already falling off the sunflower and I pressed them and they came out great this one here is milkweed among all its medicinal purposes um, it attracts butterflies so I always have butterflies around my house thanks to this mm -hmm. milkweed and this one here is a weed that's growing in between my grass and I just pulled it and I pressed it and look how beautiful sweet and tender it is and this is a different batch of flowers that I uncovered a little too early. They were still a little humid um, to touch. So I went ahead and I covered it again. And this you want to do because um, you want to make sure that the flowers are completely dry, paper-like before taking them out um, so that you can get those colors and they don't uh, start creating any mold or start losing any of that color. So make sure that your flowers are completely dry before taking them out completely of the presser. Here I'm sharing some of the cards that I made using these press flowers and I have many, many more ideas of projects to do with them. I hope you subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of these when I share them with you. As always, I hope you get inspired. I hope you create and be happy. See you next time. Bye-bye. Wet, a little humid. Um, you want to cover them and put them back in the plastic bag because it will not... Chewy, stop with that toy noise.